So we're starting part 30 here of the preparers to table before me, otherwise known as wild harvest edibles. One thing to remember as we discuss the things that we talk about tonight, that uh, whether in sickness or in health, it's always recommended that you partner with a, a medical practitioner who has a similar philosophy of care that you do. That way you are having a similar path of thought about the situation at hand. The information shared in this presentation is, is designed to be an educational process and should be just a number, another part of your wellness toolbox <clears throat> and not be construed as medical advice, just tools to be used that others have used in a similar fashion. Any protocol that comes your way should be investigated thoroughly before implementing uh, in any way you look at it. So just make sure you do your due, due diligence as you seek uh, to know more. Thomas Edison said, the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will instruct his patient in the care of the human frame and diet and the cause and prevention of disease. <clears throat> Tonight's topic is a little lichen called usnea. Usnea is a very common Pacific Northwest lichen. <clears throat> It's also known as old man's beard. You can see the long flowing uh, presentation of it there in the lower right. And on the upper right, you see a smaller presentation of it. It comes in a lot of different species. So we have the genus Usnea and the species are different, different presentations of that species. <clears throat> so it's actually a lichen is a symbiotic relationship between a fungus and an algae. The fungus is what you see. It provides the protective structure around the algae that keeps it from drying out and desiccating and dying. And the algae is housed inside and photosynthesizes and utilizes uh, light for uh, producing carbohydrates that then are used by the fungus <clears throat> to maintain its, its uh, metabolism. So it doesn't derive any of its nutrition from what it grows upon, simply from the atmosphere around it. All lichen has those two components, a fungal component that uh, shields it and is a house in which an algae lives. And <clears throat> lichen comes in all different kinds of presentations uh, and colors. It's a really an amazing organism that God's made. But usnea in particular has some well-known medicinal properties and some edibility associated with it. <clears throat> some identifying features are that it has an, in, an inner elastic cord. And you can see that on the lower uh, two pictures here, someone pulling them apart with their fingers. You can see that cord in the middle and the left picture shows that fuzzy cord uh, that's central to the usnea organism. <clears throat> so all the different species have that and all the usnea species will have the same uh, properties associated with them. But if you're, Curious as to whether it's an usnea or not, just look for that little elastic cord in the center of the organism. <clears throat> just pull it apart gently. When it's real dry, it'll probably just break off, but if it's moist and moistened, <laughs> it's very elastic and in the center of the, of the lichen. It's actually a bioindicator of healthy air quality. So in our region here, it is very healthy. And we see that because the lichen is, is very healthy and parts of the country where the air is very smoggy <clears throat> or other airborne pathogens and or uh, just pollutants, it doesn't thrive, it actually dies. And that can be a very uh, good indicator, a bad indicator of a problem. So it, uh, it's a bioindicator species. <clears throat> So those are a couple different things about, about usnea. So from an edibility standpoint, you can eat it with some preparation. It's not something you can just pull off the branch and eat. <clears throat> you can see a nice little picture of a, of a hummingbird here that uses lichen as its nest and it's a little, little um, smaller than a teacup size nest. <clears throat> if you're gonna be eating usnea, you should leach it several times. So cook and rinse, cook and rinse, cook and rinse and toss the rinse water away. It's edible, but not necessarily palatable. Probably is something you would want to add into another dish as a, a filler and a, a bulk addition, <clears throat> kind of like you would other fungi, even though this has a, an algae basis to it as well, but you wouldn't use it as a dish by itself. You'd use it as a, an accessory component to another kind of a stew or dish. So eating too much usnea can lead to an upset stomach. So it's not something you would want to use as a primary 
main dish in a, in a given meal uh, have a, an abundance of therapeutic properties that we'll refer to here uh, shortly. <clears throat> so the medicinal usage of usnea, some different qualities that are, are very uh, well known. It's a powerful antibiotic, it has antiviral properties, it's an antifungal and an antimicrobial. So two, uh, two key tinctures uh, that you should think about or consider carrying with you when traveling, especially when you might have a potential exposure to, to sick people. It helps to prevent illness, so help to stave it off, as well as um, bring back health if you do happen to catch a bug. So usnea tincture, which we'll talk about here later on, <clears throat> and blue elderberry tincture. So black elderberry would be the same thing, but elderberry tincture. Uh, <clears throat> and we've talked about elderberry in the past in a previous, uh, previous series <clears throat> episode. So you put the usnea tincture in a spray bottle and you can carry that spray bottle around and you can use it both externally and internally. If you have a, a little infection starting to settle in in the back of your throat, a little scratchy kind of horse into the, of the throat, you can spray the usnea to the back of the throat and it'll help to send that pathogen packet. Uh, you can also use it on wounds. Again, it has antifungal properties, antimicrobial properties, antibiotic properties. And those will be helpful if you have like a, uh, an abrasion or a wound that can't be addressed with, with other measures. It's just a handy thing to be able to have access to in the, um, in the outdoors. In fact, you can actually use a poultice of just a fresh usnea, which we'll talk about later. So it doesn't have to be even just a tincture. So the, the tincture preparations, we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth towards the end here, but usnea extracts well in oil. So there's different types of, of tincture preparations, but oil is a good tincture preparation, or you can do a double tincture extraction in water or alcohol. And those are gonna be excellent for an external application. <clears throat> I would use the oil extraction for internal usage. So use as, a, as an antibiotic is, is uh, well known and helpful. Um, you can use it internally and ex externally for that purpose. It's effective against a number of different things like strep, staph, tuberculosis, and methylacin resistant, um, uh, antibiotic resistant uh, MRSA. <clears throat> so the fungal portion of the outer layers of usnea are where the antibiotic properties are found. So they're actually, about equivalent to that of penicillin, maybe even better. So they're right on par with penicillin. So again, penicillin is a mold-based antibiotic. This isn't mold, this is fungus, uh, <clears throat> which is similar but different, uh, and then has that, has that uh, uh, algae component on the interior. So it's, it's effective against gram-positive bacteria in particular. It's less effective against gram-negative bacteria. So E. coli would be an example of the gram-negative bacteria. So gram negative, gram positive are just terms that describe the way the cell wall is different in the different families of, of bacteria. A quick way to do that is with a, a gram stain. So you're using a, a uh, crystalline violet, crystal violet purple dye, and then it gets an application of, of iodine, which helps to fix it. You do an alcohol wash, and then you do a, another application of of uh, saffron. <clears throat> and that will show up the gram negative and gram positive uh, bacteria that happen to be present. The gram negative will be purple, the gram, I mean, gram positive will be purple, and the gram negative will be more pinkish. And you can get an idea of what class is predominant in a particular slide that has been cultured or, or collected. <clears throat> so it's basically a difference in the way the cell wall takes up the dye that's being used. So some examples of gram-positive bacteria are streptococcus, where it's the basis of strep throat, so common cause of sore throats. So rather than taking an antibiotic, this could be used because it has those antibiotic properties inherent in it. Use a tincture of, of usnea. The pneumococcal uh, <clears throat> bacteria, which is a causal agent of pneumonia. So basically the name pneumococcus uh, refers to the fact that there's fluid in the little air sacs. Uh, and then MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus is MRSA. So it's, a, it's an antibiotic-resistant staph infection, essentially. <clears throat> and it has been typically replaced by vancomycin in most places today, the methic methicillin, because of the antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Uh, but 
there are still antibiotic strains that may be being developed to vancomycin even. So the use of a natural product uh, could be beneficial. And like most things medicinal, you wanna just use them when necessary. And that's where medicine has gotten in trouble with antibiotic resistance because they have been used just to give something to somebody <clears throat> when it isn't necessary uh, or necessarily that uh, particular thing that's, that's causing the issue. <clears throat> For example, someone has a viral infection and they're given an antibiotic, there's gonna be no benefit uh, from the viral infection standpoint. However, that's been done and has set up a, a system or a situation of antibiotic resistance. So ISNI is a good go-to uh, option for uh, antibiotic needs. So it has powerful antiviral properties. So uh, there are three in particular that have responded well to that. Epstein-Barr virus, the herpes virus in its various classes, and HPV, human papillomavirus. <clears throat> It's actually a very effective a treatment for commonly uh, derived viral illnesses. Uh, usnea tincture, an usnea tincture douche can help with cervical dysplasia. So basically that's um, precancerous cells that begin to proliferate in the, uh, in the vaginal area. It's a sexually transmitted disease and uh, is initiated by the human papilloma virus. So if someone were to come across someone who needed that kind of a treatment in, in a field situation or in a situation where other treatment options weren't available, this could be a good approach to, to help them with. So lungs, bladder, UTIs, other types of infections, kidney infections. So a UTI that's been left too long can lead to a kidney infection and that is, is bad news. Um, so respiratory conditions, so like bronchitis, pneumonia. So we already talked about the underlying uh, uh, pneumococcal bacteria being affected by the antibacterial properties of usnea, sinus infections, we've talked about strep, and then various colds and flus respond well as respiratory uh, conditions to the use of usnea. So the antiviral antibiotic qualities help to both eliminate and uh, aid the immune system in its, in its functioning to bring it uh, into better parity for whatever challenge is, is being brought to it. So UTIs and kidney infections, bladder infections, so the whole urinary tract infection is, is uh, urinary tract system is benefited by the use of usnea if there's an infection present. Shouldn't just use it prophylactically necessarily, uh, just on a regular basis, but like we've said before, use it as needed, but have it available so that it can be used if needed. It's best used as a double extracted usnea tincture, and we'll talk about that double extraction process uh, later on. The picture here is of the pneumococcal. Uh, bacteria that is instrumental in causing pneumonia. So for skin issues, various wounds and infections <clears throat> to the integumentary system, you can apply a direct poultice if you're in the field and have no preparations made. Again, it's the, the outer wall of the usnea. So this is a big kind of uh, wicker basket dish of usnea that's been collected. <clears throat> and you can actually direct, uh, directly apply it to the skin. <clears throat> so you can also put it into a tincture or have a salve that's infused to so do an oil extraction and mix it with beeswax <clears throat> and have a nice salve available for, for use. This also has pain killing properties. So anti-inflammatory as well as uh, analgesic pain killing properties. So that can be used on joints as well as on uh, a wound area, a flesh wound, a skin wound. So not only does it have antibacterial properties, but also some analgesic properties. Fungal infections. So interestingly enough, this is a fungus and allergy, and it actually is antifungal, which is kind of an interesting combination here. So yeast infections are, are not down very well. So women using uh, usnea preparations can have good benefits. And not that women have exclusively yeast infections, but they're more common in women. So it's a very powerful antifungal. Also effective against other types of fungal infections like athlete's foot, jock itch, ringworm, and some types of dandruff that are, are fungal based. So the jar to the right is a jar of usnea in oil, probably olive oil, hence it's got the amber look versus the gr nice green fresh look. And it's in the process of having an extraction process uh, take place. So you can use the tincture as a douche, dilute it, uh, in the tincture in boiled water. And of course you'd wanna cool it somewhat before using it as a douche, but it could be used uh, to wash uh, an area that was infected by a fungus. 
So thrush is, a, is an infection of the mouth and throat. Sometimes uh, cancer patients become prone to uh, thrush more so than the general population. Kids can, can have it, um, but you can place that tincture in a spray bottle and apply it to, to the areas that are affected by the thrush. So that would be the same spray bottle you'd use if you started to feel like have a sore throat coming on or other, other respiratory, upper respiratory infection, just spray it to the back of the throat or in the throat uh, to the affected uh, areas. <clears throat> so a good, a good tool to have in the toolbox for fighting uh, thrush. And the, the lower right is a common, a common presentation of usnea in the field. Oftentimes it's, it's very high in the trees, but a great time to collect it is after a windstorm when it's uh, fallen to the ground and easy to access. <clears throat> it can be helpful in conjunctivitis, essentially inflammation of the, of the conjuncta. So you see two pictures here of a normal, a normal eye. So pink eye is another name for it. It turns the conjuncta red because it's inflamed, but you can do a um, usnea infusion and use it as, a, as an eye wash. Also, you can include yarrow, chamomile, plantain, and raw honey in that wash. So below is another presentation of usnea, the one that's standing upright like a little bush. And it kind of reminds me of, of a little tree that might be found illustrated in a Dr. Seuss book. <clears throat> There's another lichen there that's nice and flat, but it's not usnea. So that may have some other properties, but usnea is the one of interest here. It has the properties that we're describing. You can see the terrate or round stems there. If you were to separate those gently, you would find that nice elastic white fuzzy cord on the interior. So when harvesting usnea, some things to keep in mind. It's easiest again after a windstorm to, to harvest usnea. Uh, lots of times those branches that are way up high and out of reach will come down into reach. Uh, there's a couple different types of usnea that are that are here. Again, it's the the spindly uh, spindly one that's sticking up and on the sticks. That's the usnea. Again, look for that inner core in the lower right that's found uh, classically in all species of usnea. Lichen grows very slowly by nature, so it's best to harvest from the downed limbs, fresh down limbs, rather than just taking it off off of a tree. But it does grow slowly. It's not going to hurt the tree. It's just uh, <clears throat> is the end of the lichen for that, that lichen once it's been harvested. So continue to leave it uh, growing in place until it's needed and just harvest as you need it. So you wanna harvest it from an area that's clean where the usnea is thriving, because again, we noted that it was an indicator species for air quality. And if it's actually not doing well, you probably don't want to use it internally or even externally on the body. And it may have uh, toxins that it has incorporated into it that you don't want to have concentrated on your skin or in your body. So use it fresh or dry. So you can use it fresh or dry as a poultice. Uh, you can store it in a cool, dry, dark place and use it for future use. Sometimes it actually makes a really good fire starter. I've used it that way before in the summertime. It's just like crispy, really crispy and crumbly. But then come fall, it rehydrates with the rains and the mists and becomes very, very bioactive again. So always check for that, that white core, especially as you're getting to know usnea. Once you know usnea, it's uh, pretty much uh, very hard to miss. So don't take it continuously in large doses, just use it as needed for a particular issue. It's a very concentrated, powerful um, tincture, medicinal therapeutic use. So you wanna use it judiciously. It's okay to frequently spray the throat as a prophylactic, but don't take large amounts of the tincture internally. Uh, the spray, they've done some, some enzyme analysis, uh, kidney enzyme or liver enzyme analysis, and there has been no negative uh, effect of using the spray over time, but using a higher amount um, could, be, could be detrimental over time. So pregnant and breastfeeding women should not use it internally. You can use it externally for various fungal infections or, or uh, wounds, that would be fine. Uh, Usnea can take up airborne pollutants. We talked about that. So make sure that you're harvesting it from pure air areas. It tends to die in areas that are polluted. So areas where heavy metals are being uh, put into the air or uh, exhaust fumes like along a, a busy, busy roadway or other industrial areas where there may be additional air pollution uh, present. You wouldn't want to use the Usnea there and it would probably be indicating its unhealthiness by the appearance of the usnea. 
So here's a recipe. So the tea, while it can be helpful, that's just a, just a basic tea, uh, is unable to access all the benefits, the medicinal benefits of, of usnea. So a double extracted tincture is the best way to access all those properties. So if you're using externally, an alcohol extraction is, is very, very powerful in, in getting those properties accessible. Um, if you're using it internally, I substitute glycerin for the alcohol, so you're not ingesting the alcohol. The extract or tincture um, uh, and replace the alcohol uh, to medicinal water at a three to one ratio. So basically you're gonna extract the tincture. If it's an alcohol extraction, you'll have uh, three times to one part, three parts to one part alcohol tincture of usnea to one part water. And that would make, that's gonna make a, based on the volume of, of, of extraction that you have, would be a small amount or, or a large amount. So it's gonna be mostly the tincture, the therapeutic properties, and just a little bit of water, distilled water to um, add volume. So the final solution may be cloudy, to shake it before use, to kind of suspend the therapeutic properties throughout the media before using it. It also extracts well in olive oil. So in olive oil infusion, so not to be confused with an infusion being a loose leaf tea kind of a preparation, but using, uh, putting, packing it into a jar and then putting oil into it, olive oil, and then setting it in a, in a, a dark cabinet and doing a daily or, or every other day rotation um, is a good way to extract that with using oil. So it has some good properties that can come out. So grind the usnea well. So you would want to have it dry. Uh, and basically it's, it's accessing the inner core <clears throat> when you grind it, as well as breaking down the exterior uh, core or, sh or shell. So here's a recipe for the double extraction process. So you can scale this depending on how many, how much you have of, of the ingredients available. Uh, and you would use the same procedure for a lichen or a mushroom. So there's some, some medicinal mushrooms that can have extracts made from them as well. So for this particular example, we use eight ounces of lichen and 24 ounces of 80 to 100 proof alcohol. So that'd be for external applications. If you're gonna use internal applications, you'd wanna use vegetable glycerin. And that's a, approximately a 45 to 50% alcohol uh, preparation. And then 16 ounces of distilled water. So this kind of comes in two parts. So steps one through five are the ex alcohol tincture extraction. So fill a quart canning jar half full of lichen. Go ahead and pack it in there and grind it up and, and powder it. And then fill it to a half inch of the top with alcohol or glycerin if you're gonna be using it internally. Stir it and cap it. Shake it every few days for two months, uh, strain the alcohol out and, and keep the alcohol. So you wanna keep the fluid portion and then discard the extract, extracted lichen. <clears throat> so you're gonna set that aside. So that alcohol tincture you're gonna have, and then we're gonna, that's the, that's the first extraction. Now we're gonna do a double, a uh, second extraction. And this is gonna be of, of additional, additional lichen. So make a decoction of usnea, so it's gonna be fresh or dried. So 16 ounces of, of water in a ceramic or glass pot. And uh, that recommendation is based on uh, mitigating any kind of reactivity with any a metal pot that might be present. So use glass or, or ceramic. Put the lichen in and cover it in, with, with the water and simmer on low until the water is reduced to half. So down to eight ounces. So if the water level drops rapidly, so if it boils more rapidly and, and vaporizes more quickly or the heat's a little bit higher, add more water. So it should take, it should take several hours to do that extraction. It shouldn't be, shouldn't be rapid because the time duration of, of heating it is what allows the constituents to be removed and uh, transferred to the water. In the end, you wanna have eight ounces of decoction as a result. So don't boil it, just simmer it, keep it nice and low. So cool the water and strain it. And then you're gonna add that to the alcohol tincture uh, from above. So the results, uh, this results in a 30% alcohol shelf stable when uh, sealed and stored. So a three to one alcohol tincture to, to water extraction. <clears throat> so not just pure water, but the, the, the coction that has been extracted in water. So you're gonna be mixing a, a alcohol tincture and a water extracted tincture into a uh, combined tincture, a double extracted tincture. 
So some tips for the double extraction, you can use a small crock pot for the slow heating and it keeps a nice even heat when put on low and keep that uh, heat going for, for a number of hours as you're reducing the fluid volume and extracting the, the constituents from the lichen. You can also put the jar of lichen in a hot water bath or in a crock pot as well. So rather than just using the plain crock pot, you can do a, like a double boiler kind of application. Uh, one thing to be sure is cut up the usni into tiny pieces that include the core. So again, we have the core here showing out here, the fuzzy white central elastic core. Make sure that that's included and exposed. So the, the breaking up is going to expose it as well as have it included. So place those herbs in a, in a distilled uh, water in the crock, stir it well, and then cook for three days on the lowest setting. So that's using a crock pot for the double boiler application extraction of, um, with the water. So uh, cool after three days and then pour it into a glass jar. And um, then you add the alcohol tincture while the water is warm. So you save the alcohol tincture from the first extraction and you bring it while the water is still warm, the water extraction is still warm and add the two together uh, while it's still warm. Not hot, but while it's warm. So cap it tightly, label it and date it. You always wanna know how old your preparations are and uh, extract it together for, for eight weeks. Strain that usnea out with cheesecloth, and then you have it ready for um, internal or external application. Um, if you're going to do an internal application, I'd recommend using a glycerin extract. It may not be able to extract quite as many of the properties. Uh, it may not have quite as long a, a shelf life, but it is preferable for using internally as opposed to alcohol. So here's some, some uh, wrap-up pictures here of usnea. So in the upper right corner is an unhealthy... Uh, usnea specimen. It must have been in a industrial area or area where air pollution was causing some uh, problems with it. So that's uh, a good example of an unhealthy specimen of usnea. It's going to have the, the white inner core, but it doesn't have that nice, nice green. There's a variety of different species that are shown. Uh, the key identifying factor again is that white core. Uh, you can see it kind of bushy on the upper left uh, hanging down like a beard there uh, in the lower left and kind of has some interesting fruiting body kinds of uh, structures on the one in the central bottom picture, which is really kind of neat. <clears throat> uh, the one on the, the far right is called Methuselah's beard. And you can see this very, very long. Sometimes it'll hang down in a very long swooping, swooping uh, thread like fuzzy thread that hangs down, but it almost looks like a curtain, almost like Spanish moss when it's all uh, condensed together, <clears throat> like you see in this picture. So that's known as Methuselah's beard. And then there's old man beers over on the left, old man's beard, and uh, then the other species of usnea, which are also found. So that's a, a look at the beneficial properties of usnea. While it does have some edibility, it's not highly palatable, better to use it in conjunction with another dish. Uh, in that uh, eating too much of it at one time could cause some stomach upset anyway. So just use it as an adjunct. Uh, but then it's it's multitude of medicinal properties that have a multitude of uh, therapeutic benefits. And that is looking at usnea.